Hi viewers, welcome back to this week of uh, RHO Market Chat. Well, last week we witnessed another very volatile week on Wall Street. Uh, we saw Dow Jones index falling two days in a row by more than a thousand points. Well, are you bullish, bearish or confused? I believe a lot of people are confused. And tonight, let me just share with you some insight on why I think the market could be hitting. Well, uh, let's do a little bit of recap on the, um, what I said last week. Well, last week I said that I believe the market has hit a very significant resistance and the market was or is in a, a exhaustion state. So uh, I was showing you the mark indicator showing exhaustions not only in the S&P and NASDAQ, but also in stocks like Apple, Amazon, and AMD. So I was highlighting the overhead resistance of S&P 500 from 2870 to 2952, and that was spot on. All right, on 29 April, all right, last week, uh, S&P hit a high of 2955, uh, before doing a very, very steep correction. So, recap again, and this is uh, Amazon. And what I, I said was that, you know, I saw on this trade plan that Amazon could have peaked at 2458. And you witnessed last week that the Amazon, uh, after hitting 2458, uh, fell very sharply to 2286. All right, so my next, according to this trade plan, my next resistance will be 2220 and uh, 2130, followed by 2030. Well, 2030 will be my conviction buy. And I was sharing with you Dow Jones trade plan. And uh, look here, right? So this was one of the target that I said, if Dow Jones were to be to, were to rally uh, on uh, the earning release of the big tax. So this was like 24,700. And uh, that was exactly when where Dow Jones were, went last week, 24. 24700. Look at that. That was 24700 and that was spot on. And then we have two days of correction that was down by more than a thousand points. All right. So this week, right, we started off uh, this week with a little bit of um, not so good news. Uh, we heard uh, how Warren Buffett dumped stocks and grew his cash power. And we also heard about how JP Morgan said that this bottoming process right, is not going to be V-shaped. Right? It's going to be like a gradual bottoming or a U-shaped bottoming. Well, JP Morgan was a little bit more bearish and uh, JP Morgan said the investors should be prepared for coronavirus-induced vicious spiral. More than twice as bad as the global financial crisis, all right? So that doesn't look really too good. And well, just last week, uh, I guess Friday, we had this news of uh, US tension again uh, growing, escalating after Mike Pompe, the secretary, uh, the US Secretary of State said that he had enormous evidence that the novel coronavirus originated in the lab of Wuhan. And Trump responded by saying that a conclusive report on the Chinese origin of the virus will be forthcoming. And Trump did say that if there is sufficient proof to, to believe that the virus came from China, he would threaten trade tariffs on China. All right, so where are we now in the faces of the market? Really, you know, 
my personal belief is that the bear market could have just started. And after the market bottomed uh, in March, we had a huge rebound. All right. And this rebound, like what I said last week, could last for a while. It will rebound and it will go into a range trade that will last for one to two months or even three months before uh, we have another big downturn coming. All right. So many of you would have known that last week, right, I called for a short of the market last Thursday specifically, right? I called for short for short of the market uh, on my chat group with all my followers, you know. I said, well, I have started to short the market. And a lot of people are wondering why, you know, that why is it that after I shorted the market, the market fell almost quite immediately. Well, I just want to share with you, right? I just want to play back a little bit of my experience, right, in the global financial market crash in 2008. So this is where after the Dow Jones peak, okay, somewhere off in uh, November 2007, all right, it felt um, 17% and then it rebounded. And then rebounded, okay? And that rebound, right, was a 60% retracement. So I remember back then in during the global financial crisis when uh, I was bearish in the market too and I called a sell here right at the peak. When the market fell, you know, I was getting excited and I thought, boy, you know, I was right. And then lo and behold, boom, we saw a big rebound and that rebound is almost about the same magnitude that we are seeing now. So what you are seeing now, right? in this very fierce and ferocious rebound is not something that is not normal. It has happened before. And uh, even in the great financial crisis, we had such a huge rebound. But after the rebound, okay, the market fell, right? Um, 60% down, all right, from this peak, all right? It fell 60% down and that took a win out of the market. So what about today? So this is, this is where the Dow Jones peak, all right, uh, around about uh, 29,400, well, and it fell to about 38% uh, from the peak to the bottom in March, and then it did a huge rebound to where we are today, all right? So is there a similarity between the Dow in 2008 and 2020? All right, so look here. All right, the re and one of the reasons why, right, uh, besides my trade plan, I sort of started to short the market uh, was because Dow, um, like in 2008, had a 60% retracement. So when a 60% retracement was hit, that was where I started to do uh, some shorting. Okay, and the question is, uh, will this, be followed by a crash? Uh, the answer is not at the moment. What I believe is that the market is still in a consolidation phase and uh, investors and traders should be buying as, as support and selling at resistance. But this phase, all right, this phase, the rebound phase and consolidation phase will last for maybe another one or two months before we see a final collapse. All right, S&P, all right, is look similar, right? So S&P in 2008 had a 20% fall from the top, uh, rebounded 14%, and that was a 42% retracement. Guess what? And after that, it collapsed. So let's take a look at S&P now, all right? We saw a 42% retracement. So S&P now did a 83% retracement, very, very close to where we were, all right? Uh, in 2008. And what about NASDAQ, all right? So NASDAQ similarly, all right, had a 55% retracement. Did it happen? Today, today we had NASDAQ retracing about 72%. So, so the 72% is a lot more, all right? But, but 
I hope that uh, eventually it will come off. All right, what about STI, right? So STI had a 45% retracement. And what about now? All right, the figure looks very close, all right? So we had 43% against a 45% retracement back then in 2008. All right, could the rebound be over? Well, I think so, but we have to be cautious because I believe that uh, the crash is not going to come straight away. It will consolidate uh, for a couple of months here before it finally comes down. So we have been there, all right, before. What about um, the Great Depression? So in the history of the stock market, we had three biggest crash. All right, the Great Depression, all right, uh, back there in the 1920s. Then we have a global financial crisis. And now we have this COVID-19 crisis. Okay, so, so what happened back there in the, the Great Depression? S&P fell 44% in 58 days and it rallied 20% to enter into a bull market. But unfortunately, after the 338 days later, it crashed. So, could it be similar? What's happening today? Why is it that uh, I believe that today's crisis is a lot worse than what we have saw in history? Well, like Warren Buffett said, this crisis is different. The debt, wealth, destruction, and lower pay will be coronavirus legacy. Today, prices of stocks, bonds, commodities, and other asset classes has become disconnected from fundamentals. They will need to fall a lot more further if the current crisis were to continue. But the market has largely assumed that the virus will be, or the crisis will be short-lifted and a rapid economic recovery will ensue and the government or the central banker will come to their rescue. But looking at the destruction of debts, all right? So let me take you back, all right? In, during the Great Recession or the global financial crisis, the US lost around 10 trillions from drawdowns in savings, falling values of houses and investments. After the COVID-19, depleted savings will affect not only consumer patterns, but also consumption levels. All right, the longer term rising stock and houses may restore wealth, but for those who are forced to sell now, all right, they will be hurt and the effect will be most damaging amongst people of lower social economic group. The crisis will leave behind a legacy of debts. Today, debts, personal debts, corporate debt, government debts, they are all at unprecedented high. Household for business and government are highly indebted and will experience a sharp rise in borrowing to cover cash flows shortfalls. Right. And with half to two-thirds of the government support packages structured as loaned, the indebtedness will grow substantially even after the crisis is over. Household and business who are owing a lot of debts right, will pull back their, 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 their spending or restrict their future spending and investment, and that will cause a gradual decay in the recovery or, or cause a slow recovery. Businesses will be slow to recover. Small, most smaller businesses lack the reserves to meet expenses. Uh, today, we have lockdown all over the world uh, and uh, some of the lockdowns can be as long as three to four months. And a lot of business don't, have, don't even have money, all right? Just cover one to two months of expenses. All right. Today, a lot of people are displaced from their job. Uh, in, in, in the U.S., we have almost 20 million uh, people out of job. And that persistent negative, that will cause a persistent negative in the labor market. And a lot of these um, jobs, right, even if after a crisis, is going to be uh, difficult to come back. All right, so 
increased state involvement and higher government debts will also be difficult to reverse. So today we are building a mountain of debts and it's going to be tough all right, to, to, to reverse the whole situation. And that process of reversal all right, will cause right, a slow recovery or even a very, very long recovery. Right? And um, this crisis will cause behavioral change in people. Well, uh, a lot of people will be afraid of traveling. A lot of people will be afraid of uh, dining in. Uh, a lot of people will now uh, be so used to staying at home, to be working away from office, will continue to do so. And therefore, a lot of hospitality business, restaurant business will, and, and even transportation business will suffer. And there is this um, sell in May and uh, stay in the lockdown, all right? So, the common cliche to this was sell in May, go away, but with the coronavirus, uh, I would say sell in May and stay in the lockdown. So true enough, 1st of May, the market came crashing. 2nd of May, the market went even lower. And uh, you know, last week we saw beneficiary, all right, or supposedly ben beneficiary of the coronavirus, Amazon, all right, uh, even announcing disappointing results. And with the escalating politics, political situation between US and China, uh, I think the outlook in the near term is clouded. So the question is, will the market retest the March low or is, just, is this just a shallow uh, pullback before the next leg go higher? Well, I believe that uh, we could have hit the top we are going to a consolidation phase and um, that will take a couple of months before we visit the March low. All right, so I've come to the end of uh, this market chat. I hope you enjoy it and I hope you have benefited from it. Stay safe, stay at home, and I will see you again next week. Okay, bye-bye.